Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw a pen and ink style drawing in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you how you can draw an illustration something like this in Illustrator. We're going to have a look at creating our own brushes for these lines and also how to create the sort of offset effect. So I'm going to start now by creating a brand new document. I've started by creating a document that's a thousand by a thousand points in size, but your image could be any size that you like. Let's create first of all the brush that we're going to use. So I'm going to go and get the ellipse tool and I'm going to drag out a very long narrow ellipse. I want it to be black filled and I don't want it to have any stroke at all. Now I want the ends of my ellipse to be pointy, so I'm going to click on it with the Direct Selection tool and click this Convert Selected Anchor Points to Corner because that makes it a pointy end. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. And then I'm going to make this brush really, really narrow, so I'm going to grab hold of the Selection tool and just make it very, very narrow. Just squeeze it all the way up there. And once I've got a nice narrow brush, I can save it as a brush. I'm going to choose Window and then Brushes. And I'm just going to drag and drop it into the Brushes panel here to make it something that I can use in my illustrations. Just going to drag it, drop it in there. Click Art Brush, click OK. And I want to be able to color it if I did want to color it. So I'm going to choose Tints and just click OK. That's all we need to do. And we can just get rid of this shape now just by pressing Delete. Now we're going to create a background first of all. And for my background, I just use a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. And I have a script that does that for me automatically. It just makes life a whole lot easier. If you're interested in how to do that, look out here for my video tutorial on scripting in Illustrator that shows you how to find and install a script like that. So I have my path selected. I'm going to fill this with a gradient. So I'm going to click on the gradient tool here and I'm going to use a blue color. This is a bit too much blue, but we can change that in just a minute. I'm going to drop that in there and a pale yellow on the other end. I want this to be a radial gradient and I want it to come from the bottom up. So I'm going to grab my gradient tool and just drag that in from here. I just think it's too blue and too yellow, so I'm going to alter down the opacity to about 50% on either end. So I get a more sort of paler sort of effect. So Let's just lock down that layer so that it's not going to move as we draw. And I'm going to create a new layer for my ice cream. Now, my basic ice cream shape is going to use the default options or the default color. So I'm just going to press the letter D. I want a black stroke. I don't want any fill at all. So I'm just going to set that to no fill. And I'm going to draw out my ice cream, which is going to be two shapes. It's going to be a circle. So I'm going to draw out a circle here. And it's going to be a rectangle the size of the circle. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to start drawing over using the alignment options to just line up my circle and my rectangle. Now I want to go and move my rectangle so that it's just over the top of my circle. So this is going to be my ice cream. Now it's way too long, so I'm just going to shorten that a little bit. And I'd also like the corners here to be rounded. So with this rectangle selected, I'm going to choose Effect and then Stylize Rounded Corners. And I'm going to click on Preview and I'm going to control those rounded corners myself. I'm going to get just the rounding that I want. And I think about 21 points is going to be a nice amount of rounding. It's going to make sure that this circle is going to encompass everything, including that rounded set of corners, because I don't actually want to see that in my ice cream. Now I'm ready to create my ice cream shape, but right now this is not an expanded shape and it needs to be expanded. So I'm going to click on the rectangle and choose Object Expand Appearance. And that's going to make these corners actually part of the shape. 
Now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to click on the Shape Builder tool because I just find it just a little bit easier to combine shapes sometimes using the Shape Builder tool. I'm just dragging over all the three shapes that I want to now make into my ice cream. So this is the basic ice cream shape. Now I want two copies of it because I want one to put the lines on and one to fill. So with it selected I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. Let's have a look at the Layers palette. And I've got two copies of this ice cream. Let's just make those images just a little bit larger here so that you can see them a bit more clearly. I'm going to select the bottommost one and I'm going to fill it. So I'm going to just invert the colors and then choose a sort of orange color for my ice cream shape. Let's go to the path on top which is now this path that has a very narrow stroke and no fill and let's go and get our brush. I'm going to click on my stroke to target it and then click on the art brush and that's now given me a sort of brush effect. But you can see that the brush is going all the way around the shape and I may want the brush to be in different places. I may want it to be thick and thin a bit more. Well let's start by moving it just offset. So I'm selecting that path and I'm just moving it offset from the color underneath. So I'm just using the keyboard there just to get that effect of the color being slightly offset. Now I'm going to go and get the scissors and they share a toolbar position with the eraser tool but it's the scissors I want. And again I'm going to target this path around the ice cream and I'm just going to hack into it with the scissors in a few places. And every time I click on the path with the scissors you can see that the path is being broken up at that point. So instead of a single path we have now lots of little paths and each one of those has the same stroke, the same brush stroke applied to it. So now I can come in and select each individually and perhaps change the amount of brush stroke that it's getting. Or I can also change its profile. So I could click here to get a slightly more interesting edge to my element by changing the width profile for this brush that we've created. So this is allowing me to achieve a slightly more organic line around my shape. It's a little bit less uniform. It's broken up into little pieces. There's a bit more line variation which is suggesting that this might have been drawn with an ink pen and filled in with some paint underneath. And we're going to repeat this process for the other elements here. I'm going to go and make the stick for the ice cream. So I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle this time and just draw out something that is an appropriate size. You can see here that it's got a black stroke on it. I'm going to duplicate this shape, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And I'm going to get the bottom most copy of it, this one here, just for ease. And I'm going to fill it. So I'm going to fill it with a sort of brown color. So that's the color for my ice cream stick. Let's go and get the path that is the topmost one, the one that we're going to add our stroke to. Well, I've got black already as my color, so I'm going to click on my brush. But again, I want to cut this into pieces. Now, with this one, I think I'm going to cut it again with a couple of nips of the scissors here. And again, I'm going to select each of these little pieces individually, make sure I have my stroke targeted here. And then I'm going to make some changes to it using the toolbar options. So I'm going to choose different profiles for my brushes as they're applied to this shape here to get something just a little bit more interesting. And again, I want to offset these shapes, but in this case, it might be easier to take the filled path and offset that. So I'm selecting it and I'm just going to move it slightly out of the way. So I'm getting this sort of more painterly look. Then I'm going to take all the pieces that are used to create this one shape here and then move it into position. Now the ice cream stick needs to be behind the ice cream itself. So I think I'm going to create a new layer for that. In actual fact, let's just move the ice cream portion of it up. So let's just select over 
this lot and I'm going to move all of these with edit cut and then edit paste in place and that just moves them to their own layer so that they can be dealt with individually and that allows us to have the stick of the ice cream behind the ice cream. Let's add a new layer. This time I'm going to put the layer below this because I'm going to put in my ground. I'm going to use a ellipse for that. So let's go and grab the ellipse and I'm going to use a green filled ellipse. I think something like this green will be good and just drag that out. Let's move it into position and now we want a duplicate of this so edit copy, edit paste in place. Let's have a look and see the pieces that we've got with this top path. This is going to be our inked path so I don't want any fill on it and my stroke I want it to be black and then I want to add my brush to it. And again this one is too dark so let's first of all just offset it slightly by just nudging it with the arrow keys and then let's go and get the scissors and just break this path up into something a little bit more interesting as if it had been hand drawn. Grab each of the elements of this path and then adjust them by perhaps adding a different brush profile to them and we can also adjust the size of the brush so we could take it down to 0.75 for example just to give it a little bit more of an organic feel. Now in addition to the ice cream I had a drip coming from the ice cream so let's create that. Again that's an ellipse and I'm just going to drag out a narrow ellipse here and to make it into a drip I'm going to target the direct selection tool, click on the topmost point here and convert it and that makes it into sort of more like a drip shape and then I can just reshape it as desired. This is going to be the shape itself so I need to make a duplicate of it. Edit copy, edit paste in place and again let's have a look and see here are our two paths. The top one's going to be the one that we're going to add the brush to. The bottom one here is going to be the one we're going to add color to and so let's just switch these two around and go and pick up the orange color that we were using. Well, messed that up a bit. Pick up the orange color we're using for our ice cream. Now we want to offset these two paths so I'm going to select one of them and just offset it from the other. I've got the fill one here so I want to offset it slightly differently. I'm going to go and grab the topmost path and again let's make some adjustments to it. I think the stroke weight is way too heavy so I'm going to take it down to half a point and then I'm going to take the scissors to it as well and just break it up a little bit. Let's go and put it in position below the ice cream, size it, just double check on it. I think that we could probably change the profiles of one or two of these lines here just to get something a bit more interesting. Now this entire shape will all be rotated so I'm going to grab all of these objects here and just rotate them as a single object. So with the selection tool selected I'm going to position my mouse pointer just outside the shape and just tilt everything over. Now the final piece of this illustration was the sun and to create the sun I'm actually going to do it using a circle as my basis so I'm going to drag out a circle here now we're working in a layer that's working on green color which is a little bit difficult to see so let's go and create a new layer and take this circular path up onto that layer. That pink color is a lot easier for us to see. Now I'm going to fill it with the yellow of the sun and now let's make this look a little bit more sun-like and we can do that by choosing effect and distort and transform zigzag. I like the zigzag option because rather than the star it lets me sort of test things as I'm going and decide how many ridges do I want per segment, how big do I want these to be 
and I can click between relative and absolute to get a lot of variety. So I'm just going to test this and work out exactly what I want my son to look like. And I don't think I want my son to have a lot of points. I think something like this is going to be pretty good for me. So I'll click OK. And now I want it to look a little bit more like it's hand drawn. And to do that, I'm going to choose Effect distort and transform and I'm going to choose roughen because roughen allows me to apply a sort of roughening effect to the edges of this shape. Obviously that's way too much. So I'm just going to take down the roughening value and start playing with it. I'm going to click in the 0% and just move it up a few percent at a time. So you can say that by going with the size, we're actually making some of these points bigger than others. And then with detail, we can adjust that as well and just say that we're getting this roughening effect. Now, there's a big difference between 2 per inch and 3 per inch, but we could probably do 2.2 and we might get some variety there. Well, 2.2 is too much. 2.1, that's probably about what I want here. So I'm just going to click OK. And now I want this shape and I want it to be my sun shape. So I'm going to choose Object Expand Appearance. So this is now my sun shape. I'm going to copy it, Edit Copy, Edit Paste in Place. Because the second one I want to have a black stroke border on it and I want to apply my art brush to it. And again, I want to offset this a little bit. So I'm just going to move it with the arrow keys. Now obviously this is way too thick a stroke, so I'm going to take it down to probably around 0.75 and then get to it too with the scissors and just break it up into some smaller pieces. Illustrator is just warning me if I don't get it right in position that I have to break this up at an anchor point or on a path and I just can't click anywhere. So once I've done that, I can go and grab these individual pieces and apply a different brush profile to it. I can also change the width of the brush at this point just to get something that again looks a little bit more as if it had been hand drawn. So there's our basic illustration in Illustrator. We've created a brush to use and we've been able to create these shapes and create the sort of offset ink and paint look of a drawing in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.